Hi there, in this week's video we're concluding our two draw camera project with the installation, finally. If you haven't already seen the previous videos covering the fabrication and the build, please do check them out. But right now, let's get on with the install. So uh, yeah, this is, uh, this is the site, this is the space where our drawers are going to go. It's all a bit cosy really. <laughs> Uh, I'm not entirely sure how well this is going to work without just giving you a video of my backside all the time. Um, but the first thing we're going to do is get the little sort of low plinth into place and we'll snug this down, secure it against the back wall and down into the floorboards underneath. So the first thing we do to, uh, to pack this out is we get it square to the walls. Um, I know this frame is square because I made it um, and it's just a little bit of drift. It's not a, a huge deal, um, but I like to get it uh, as tight in as, as possible so a 4mm packer should do it. And then we level it up from side to side at the moment. It needs to come up this way by 0.4 of a degree. Depending on how much space you've got, you can actually do this with little wooden wedges. Tenth of a degree. 500 of a degree, that'll, that'll probably do, call me Slipshot and Slapdash. Uh, and then we can put little feet into here that we can then screw down right into the carpet with a little bracket on it. And we know that's, uh, and we know that's not going to move. And unusually, Five hundredths of a degree this way as well, so that's all good stuff. So with our plinth levelled up on hardwood wedges, we can screw the brackets through the carpet and into the floor. Then fix the little MDF feet to the plinth and then the brackets to the feet. And of course we check for level again when we're done. Incredibly, that's still uh, bang on. Amazing. And with the left hand side of the plinth secure, we can turn our attention to the right hand side, repeating the procedure and making adjustments as needed. So we'll put one more little foot in immediately behind here. And just for good measure, we pop in an extra foot and bracket in the centre of the plinth at the front, as this is where the weight will be when the drawers are open. Five hundredths of a degree. That is good enough. So with our plinth secure, we can bring in the draw carcass and manhandle it into position. Huh. Not bad. Seen worse? With this sort of offered up here, we can just check it's centred by offering up the scribes, the infills that we have. A little bit gappy on that side and pretty tight on this side. So. Left blow. Makes that much more even. Now we can secure it in place with a couple of our favourite tongue tight screws. again. Solid wall, fun. A little bit of belt and braces, we put a couple of little brackets on the back underneath here because that's where the uh, little uh, top fixed to it. With the carcass firmly fixed to both the plinth and the back wall, we can offer up our baseboard infill and pin this in place with a 21 gauge veneer or headless pinner. Then fix the infills to the left and right of the carcass in the same way. With 
With the top of the unit scribed to the alcove and laid in place, it's easy to fix from underneath, straight through the front and back rails and into the top. Just be sure you have the right length screws to hand. Don't ask me how I know that. Now, with the carcass and top all fixed, we can add our draw boxes into the mix, making sure the runner clips fully engage and that the drawers still run nice and smoothly. Our last job is to fit a small shelf across the width of the opening, starting with the right hand side bracket, which is fixed in place in the usual way. And then, if you can see in here, it's awfully dark, but one of the things that has caught me out a little bit, I'm putting a shelf in back here, uh, and the height of this, this crease, this waistline here, at the front it's not bad, but if you look all the way through to the back here, it's way lower on the left hand side than it is on the right to get the shelf to the height I need. I'm actually having to bevel the whole of one edge of the shelf all the way across, which is a, doing this on site is a bit of a pain really. It's the sort of thing that would be much easier to do back in the workshop. And before all you track saw fans and I'm one of them say, you could use a track saw for that. Well, I can't really because the track saw would cut that way and this lips in the way. So a bit stymied really. Old school is the uh, only way forward at the minute. And there's really no shortcut to this. Trim it back, then offer it up. I'm using a low angled block plane for this because we're chopping through some end grain here uh, on, the, on the lipping. And uh, low angle plane is very, very good for, for handling end grain. But not bad at handling MDF either. Trim it back, then offer it up. Trim it back some more, then offer it up. And so on, until it fits. Close enough, I think is the answer. So with that, all we've got to do now... Lovely. God, I'm hot. So all we need now is a dab of quick set filler in the screw holes. A little bit of paintwork touch up. So there we are, uh, little chest of drawers and a shelf, all fitted into this tiny little awkward space. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the video, it's uh, certainly a, a little unusual for me, and uh, maybe you've uh, learned a couple of things as well. If you like what you've seen, don't forget to share it freely, give it a thumbs up, and of course you can always subscribe, and then you'll be notified whenever I post something new. As always, thanks so much for watching, and uh, look forward to seeing you again here soon. Take care, bye. Oh man, gotta get up now. Oh.